Hey, what's going on YouTube? So I have a different video for you guys today. It's not about the 80, it's not about off-roading, and it's not about shooting. It's actually about my first project car, and it's under one of these tarps. Stick around. <music> Actually here at my parents house and uh, my bro this is where my brother and I store our cars as you can see this one happens to be my brother's project and this one happens to be mine in another video I'll, I'll show you what he has under here it's I don't know if any of you guys can guess and th those who know don't comment just let leave it for the video okay uh, and so this is mine this is my 1975 Toyota Celica. Let me finish uncovering it and then I'll show you guys. This has actually been my project car since, um, since 2008, 2009. I, it's actually the family project car. My brother, my dad, and I, we just, something that we've been working on for many years. Uh, we could just never get it together you know there's always been issues there's always been something that we needed to work on before finishing this so it's been a it's a, been a long road but i'll show you the progress that we have now and um maybe talk about some stuff that we want to eventually get done that we need to eventually get done but everyone who knows me knows that this car has been in our family has been with me for for ages at this point stock dash stock cluster um, there were AC vents, but we've yanked those out and, I, and I'll get into that later. Um, some Recaro seats that we had picked up from Craigslist a while back. It, this thing is just, it's still clean. Headliner. Headliner's immaculate. Back seats are... So the the um, the panels were the matching tan vinyl, you know, the same color as the seats back in the day. But I was planning to go to black vinyl, and um, yeah, that that didn't happen. And I, I changed these out maybe in about at uh, like in 2010, but that never finished. Original rear seats, um, the window rollers. For those of you who remember what window rollers are, we still have them somewhere in storage. The speakers, the rear speakers still work. The radio still works. Personal steering wheel with a Tom's horn. And check it out. This is a cool little... That's Mr. Watanabe's signature. I don't know how my brother got that, but Mr. Watanabe is the, uh, the founder of those Watanabe racing wheels. So these are Koenig Rewinds. They don't, they don't even make these anymore, but these happen to be replicas of the Watanabe racing wheels. These are Koenig Rewinds, 15 by eight, zero offset. Um, uh, for you older Filipino guys out there, these are the banana wheels. And um, tires, there's just some shitty tires that are mounted on here for now. But um, I do have a set of Enki cross fevers that we had mounted on here for a while. And took them off, they were just too small and we didn't like the offset. So these zero offset 15 by eight wheels sit the car a little bit, a little bit nicer. Swap the tail lights with a, the tail lights from a 73. The 75 actually has like these, um, these little bulges right here with little bulbs to light up the license plate. Uh, don't mind the, the lock that's been drilled out in the trunk. Original owner had Solex locks on there and we had to drill them out because we didn't have the key. And we actually found clothes from the 70s back there. Interesting story. But um, yeah, if for those of you who know, the 75s were the first year in the US that came with those big, ugly American bumpers that came out like out here. And so these smiley bumpers that they call the, the short bumpers were uh, JDM, Eurospec and 
early 70s in the US, they, those models had them. So the, this bumper is from a 73, the front bumper is also from a 73. Um, so that's why the rear license plate's kind of dangling, don't mind that. Body's pretty straight, my brother and I were practicing our body work on this thing, so if the lines, mind you, we were in high school, we were, this was all on a high school budget. And so on the 1975s, again, they have this long, they call it the, the USDM five mile per hour bumper. Replace that with the 1973 bumper. The rivets are kind of missing. <clears throat> and this is actually a slant nose 75. 75 was the last year in the US to have the slant nose. In 75 in Japan, they started having flat nose celicas. Um, and with the 75 came the power bulge. The power bulge hood. This little bulge is a big deal in the Celica world. I don't, I don't know why, because it was the power bulge to fit the powerful 20R. This is in fact a true GT honeycomb grill. Um, it, the ST would have the grill with the, the lines. The honeycomb was only available on the GT and I think the GTV in Australia, one of those, I forget. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it in the front end. Uh, here's the big reveal. Yes, it's a 22 RTE. A couple of you Forerunner guys would recognize this. This is actually the engine from an 86 turbocharged Forerunner. The the whole short block, the you know head, the actual block, the intake manifold, plenum, throttle body. Everything from a 22 RTE 4Runner. The <clears throat> turbo is a Garrett, I forget, Garrett something, from a 1989 300ZX. It's been fully rebuilt from this guy out in, uh, I think he's in Pasadena. Shout out to him, what's his name again? I forget, but he's big in the MR2 community. Um, Custom turbo manifold. Uh, this thing's been pretty, pretty much Frankenstein with whatever my brother and I can come up with at the time. We knew we wanted to do a 22 RTE setup back in the day because it was a drop-in motor, pretty much. It shares the same engine mounts, uh, cross member with the 20R, 22R, and we knew we wanted to go EFI. And at the time, we were chasing horsepower the entire time. Well, kids in high school, of course. And so we wanted to get the turbocharger in. <sighs> Nothing special. I mean, it, it's boosting about eight pounds and um, it, it runs really solid. At 10 pounds, this thing is way too fast. Um, I can, I have plenty of stories telling you I could have almost killed myself doing that. Um, this is a, the shop that helped us with the, the swap and the wiring also did the piping for the turbo and I, I, till now, I don't know why they placed the airflow meter wrapped around and then tucked in right next to the turbo. I mean, there's the, there's definitely a lot of heat soak, but, um, that's something we're, we we eventually need to take care of. Uh, master cylinder, brake master cylinder from a 280ZX with the performance options, the, the shop that did, that did the wiring, they custom fabbed a block off plate. So this car has no brake booster. For a lot of you guys out there who do a lot of track racing on custom builds, um, they said back in the day they would run their builds with no brake booster and it it's fucking sucks. Excuse my language. It sucks. You you gotta like you're Fred Fred Flintstoning the the brake pedal. You gotta slam the brake pedal just to stop. Let's see what else. Um, HKS super sequential. What else? Um, intercooler down there is from a Mitsubishi Starion, which is actually the same intercooler that uh 
Lancer Evo 3 runs. Supposedly the intercooler is good for about 17 pounds, but we'll get nowhere near that. Electric fan with a ghetto rigged thermometer thermostat here. So this thing starts to get too hot. This fan just kicks in and just pretty much jerry rigged it to the radiator, but it works. Battery was relo relocated to the back to make room for this huge beast of an engine. <laughs> it's a 2.4 liter, if I remember. Single overhead cam. This thing, it's sound. I'd start it right now, but the baby is sleeping upstairs. Um, this thing sounds like a truck. Anyone who's heard the 22R, E, the 22, the 20R, anyone who's heard those engines run, it sounds like a truck. <clears throat> But I mean, we, we never had any real problems with the engine, just chasing vacuum leaks and chasing um, stupid problems like that. That's why this this car has been down for so long, but my dad has actually been able to get it running again. I just drove it the other day and this thing is still hauling ass. Um, the problem I had with it, I guess, was the about a year ago, I jumped the timing on it. I was, I was driving it kind of hard and the timing jumped and then idle was all crapped out and then I started messing with the throttle position sensor and it messed it up even more. So right now the problem is the idle control valve or is it that? no, the idle, the idle screw is actually seized in there. So we can't really control the idle right now. This engine bolts right up to the stock transmission, which is the W50, I believe. The W50 transmission, um, in the running Exeti stage one clutch. No, I'm sorry, center force. Center force stage one clutch. Can't really get it too much, but uh, let's see. Those are AE86 struts. Cusco, I think those are Cusco. The Cusco roll center adjusters. Uh, Cusco coilovers. But the struts are actually from AE86 GTS. Um, we went with the GTS struts and everything because the GTS has the vented, um, vented calipers. These rotors are drilled and slotted from also from a GTS. Um, the rear shocks are, I believe the TRD springs with tier with matching TRD shocks. The springs we cut a, maybe about half an inch. Oh, we got that awesome stance in the back, but it rides like crap. So as you can see, guys, the car has had a lot of work done. It's just something would happen and we had to fix that before continuing with the other things. It's gone a long way, obviously, you can see. Um, I, I, I wish we took a different route with this car instead of like, instead of worrying about how fast we were gonna go and smoking whatever we can smoke out there back in the day, I wish that we stuck with something a little more traditional you know 2tg 18rg engine who cares if it was carbureted and it wasn't the fastest thing on the streets but <laughs> that's what we wanted to do we wanted to be fast and that's what we got we got fast but we didn't get reliable um but that's because we you know we don't really know what we're doing all too much we're kind of just winging it as we go um that's that's not to say this this engine is not reliable Ask any foreigner guy who's, who's wheeling their 300,000 mile um, 22R engine. This engine can handle, it's bulletproof, but we're, we're chasing stupid problems that we have, you know, that we're pretty much rookies with. So as I'm doing the editing for this video, I come to find out that the footage of the Celica rolling and um, starting up and drive-by shots have all been corrupted. Can't get the, the videos to play and uh, you know, it really sucks. I really wanted to show you guys, so I'm sorry. I can't show you that the Celica does run really well. Um, I was building up to it this entire video. Just can't see it, so. You know, um, hopefully I can get back there soon enough so that way I can upload it and, you know, you guys are still in tune long enough to see that. Um, but if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and it really helps me out. Thanks a lot.